Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. While it's Corona time and I cannot really leave the house, I have time to work on things I have been wanting to do for I don't know how many years. On my table I have a Maximus 8 gene board, which is not the latest generation anymore, but it's still Z170 and still should be some value to that board. And this board has an issue. I can show you what exactly it is. You can see I have a CPU in the socket, mainboard slots are all populated. If I hit the power button, you can see it starts cycling through the debug LED and then eventually stops at 55. And 55 means that there is an issue with memory detection. If you would not populate any memory slots, it would stop at 53. So it means that it can detect that memory dims are present, but it has a problem with memory detection. And the reason for that is that one of the pins in the socket is bent. Typically, you could always try to rearrange the pin with like a tweezer or like a very small screwdriver, try to get it back into position. Sometimes the head of the pin is just unfortunately bend in a very bad direction that it's not possible to really bend it back or sometimes even the head breaks off and in that case you can really only replace the socket directly which is something you cannot really do as a private person except you're Louis Rossman and you have a ton of um, BGA reballing equipment at home then you can maybe do that but otherwise I don't think it's possible to replace an LGA socket completely. We will try to replace a single pin which is something I haven't tried before but it should work and it should also work on all LGA boards so it doesn't matter if it's C170, C370, X299 or if it's TRX40 all LGA boards should work as pin replacement with this method. We will try it but first of all let's take a look at the pin itself under the USB microscope and then we can inspect it further. We're now looking at the socket about 20 times magnified on top you can see the mounting mechanism of the socket we will remove this later. The socket itself looks quite good to be honest and only if we go directly to the bottom right area it's not that easy to see actually but in here we have a pin where the head is bent. We will further zoom in on this in a second but first of all if you have a bent pin in the socket, it's possible to kind of locate which component could be affected by this. In general, if we take a look at the right side of the socket, you can also see all the traces right here, which come from the memory and everything that's on the right side of the socket and also on the bottom part of the socket, you can see all the traces are going in this area right here. This is memory stuff. And everything that's on top of the socket see the traces exiting on top and also nothing really on the left which is because it's, this is just a massive power plane right here. The top part and the left area of the socket those are mostly power related features and everything which is on the bottom of the socket you can also see the traces exiting right here. This should all be PCI Express stuff and just by the location where the pin is located in the socket you can usually check which component could be affected if it's on the bottom it could be that your PCI Express device like graphics card is only detected by X16. You can of course always check for pinouts online sometimes they're available I think for C170, C270 there are pinouts available online they're not directly from data sheets so you always have to be a little bit careful about the information and usually pinout information of the sockets is hard to find. If it's legacy stuff like socket 775, you might, might be lucky, but if it's X299, TRX40, I think it could be difficult to get the real pinout information to kind of trace back which function your pin that is currently banned has. I zoomed in 50 times on the pin which is banned in our case. We'll try to show it to you with my tweezer. You can see this pin right here has the head bend like 90 degree to the right and this is one of the cases where it's extremely difficult to bend it back because it's not the entire pin which is bent but it's just the head which is rotated by 90 degrees and if you try to bend this back 99% of the cases the head will just break off and it's also very difficult to get it back into 100% the correct location that's why we will try to remove this pin right now to unsolder this pin. To replace the pin we will use a hot air soldering station and I also tried to purchase one that is fairly cheap. This one was about 90 euro in Germany if you buy them on like AliExpress. I think you can find even cheaper ones for like 50-60 euros. Not sure how good they are. 
this should work out quite nicely. It was available with different size tips and I used the smallest one for now because we need only heat on a very very specific area. There were different tips included for like IC replacements and stuff so I think it could be worth it to own one of those things at home. I set the hot air soldering station to 400 degrees Celsius. Could be that it's too much, I just have to try it. I think we will need at least 220 to 230 degrees Celsius on the pin to make sure that the solder is melting, therefore 400 might work. I decided to try it with the donor board first. I have a C170 X Power Gaming on my table, which is broken anyway. Um, and that's the board I'm going to use to try to remove a pin off. And um, it's also much easier because I can just try around with a socket, try what kind of temperatures I can use uh, without worrying about breaking the board or the socket itself. And I also exchanged the tip of the hot air soldering station to a bigger diameter so I can get a little bit more heat towards the socket and now we will try to get a working pin out of the socket first. The good thing is that we already have our donor pin stuck to the tweezer which you can see under the microscope. This one looks uh, fairly nice and the key to get it out was just more temperature. We increased the diameter on the hot air soldering gun and also increased the temperature to 440 degrees Celsius. I will now try to just use a heat gun and heat up the entire main board a little bit to like I don't know 80-90 degrees Celsius so we have a higher base temperature and then locally increase the temperature with a hot air soldering station and see if that's the way to go to remove the broken pin. I think I failed a little bit because while I pulled out the broken pin I accidentally also pulled out one of the good pins and uh, now we have two holes in there which is not what I intended to do but I mean we have a lot of replacement pins and currently the main board is broken so it cannot really get worse. Yeah, I think I will try to push the two pins back, add a little bit of solder to the back side of them and also a little bit of flux and then see how it goes. I had to take a few more additional pins out of the MSI board 
You can see the socket is now entirely ruined, but yeah, just removed additional 3-4 pins out of the socket because it's really, really difficult to place them carefully inside uh, the socket of the uh, Maximus 8 gene board. It's just so extremely tiny. Without a USB microscope, I think it's going to be really difficult. A magnifying glass would be the absolute minimum to try something like this. Okay, but uh, let's just see if it worked out or if we just completely broke it because I also noticed that I was not careful enough and that I accidentally melted a tiny part of the socket. Oops. I mean, the board is broken anyway, so it cannot do much more damage, but maybe it worked out. As you can see, I populated the DIMM slots again, put the CPU in the socket, power connector for EPS 8 pin and 24 pin power connector, turning on PSU. No zero zero, that's already a good sign. Just waiting for 55. 55 passed. Yeah, VGA detection also passed. 99, 99 means it's the error code, error code F1, where you have to quit F1 keyboard. That's awesome. Seems like it's working. Decided to quickly attach a cooler, also VGA, to see if everything is working out. And you can see 32 gigabyte of memory are successfully detected and we can switch it back off Remove the cooler Take out the CPU There you see my result of the partially burned socket, but it's working I would kind of count it as a fail and win at the same time. I mean I kind of failed burning the socket, melting the socket a tiny bit, but then I also won because now it's working. And I think the method of replacing individual pins is not that bad. I think if you're a professional, if you have more experience in working with those heat guns and what exact temperatures you have to use to, it might be an easier option to replace just individual pins instead of replacing an entire socket, especially if you have SP3 and TRX40 boards. From my experience, it's really difficult to replace the entire socket or a lot of mainboard manufacturers will say, we cannot replace the entire socket. RMA will be declined if an entire pin is broken or bent. And therefore, for those kind of um, bent pins or broken pins, it could be a solution to just replace entire pins instead of the entire socket. And I mean, if you have a board sitting at home and it's broken, what do you have to lose, right? You can just try it and worst case, it's still broken. I think material-wise, it's not that bad. A hot air soldering station, as I said before, between 60, 70, 80 euros, something in that direction. You will need basic stuff like flux and tweezers, which is not that expensive. And then USB microscope will certainly help you, but I think you can also get away with a very good magnifying glass and maybe just take pictures with the phone and zoom in. That's something that usually helps. I think I will keep trying this method. If there's somebody professional out there who has more experience with this kind of pin replacement, feel free to leave comments down below to tell me how to do it correctly. And then I can maybe improve my skills on this because I think for me, this will be very useful if I break boards and can just replace the pins myself. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.